Well, we've mentioned it before. In this chapter, we learn about and we talk about the star gas star cycle. And this is how basically there's sort of this circle of life, if you will, for stars in that how when they're formed and then they die and then the material that they expel during their death, which is sort of anthropomorphizing that um, goes out into space and then that becomes material for the next generation of stars. This is a nice little um, animated thing that we can use to understand this cycle. So um, let's start right here um, in the star gas star cycle. And this is basically um, talking about gases that are released into the medium. Let's watch this. So when a star dies, it uh, explodes, um, a massive star will explode in a supernova, and that gas and the materials from that star will go out into space. This now becomes material that a star um, of, in a new generation can be made of. So we have that atomic gas that was uh, expelled from a supernova, and what's going to happen is that as that, these clouds of atomic gas condense, molecules will form, and it's these molecular clouds that stars can form from. So we're going to watch it collapse due to gravity, and as it collapses, some regions are going to get extremely warm, and, you know, of course, it becomes a lot more irregular. In very dense regions of this cloud, is where star formation is going to take place. So where the density in that last slide you saw um, there were areas where the density got really high. In fact, they actually had to change the scale to accommodate that. And it's in these regions where stars are going to be able to form. So we're going to zoom in on one of the, the bright spot, which is where the highest densities are. And in here, we're going to start to see stars form. And it's not just one star, but it's going to be several stars, and you see some of them sort of get cast off. Stars do form in clusters, um, and this is an example of showing how they are. The stars being sort of released also helps to understand how the sun could actually be rather isolated if it had actually formed in a cluster, which is more than likely. So as the stars form, now the fusion in the core is going to start, which is, signifies the birth of the star because now it can create its own energy. And as it does, it's releasing heat, and so then these pillars we're going to start to see will start to be cleared out by the radiation pressure coming off of the star. Now we have a star all by itself. So this is just more of the stars sort of losing material in space. Um, you know, there is some material that's going to be sort of spewed out during the formation process. And here we're starting to get back to the beginning of where we started a spike cycle. We have a massive star dies. It's going to explode. And the material both in the outer areas and in the interior of the star are going to be released into space. Um, because of the fact that this is um, the fusion that takes place within stars 
is how heavier elements are actually created, this is a way for those heavier elements to then be distributed into space. When we look at the interior, this layered interior of the star signifies the different materials that are in within that star, like carbon, oxygen, oxygen, silicone, iron. All these heavier materials were created through the fusion process. And now through the explosion, they're being released into space. And here what we see is a supernova remnant. And then this is really the end of the cycle. And then you start over again.